Peter likes to keep an air of mystery around him, so I won't say anything else. Just let him take over. So how are you, Peter? <clears throat> So let's stop that sharing. Um, okay, bit of a lack of sound. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear this? Oh, well, that's not going to be good, is it? Um, Does this work? No? Okay, works better. You're very soft. Ah. It was working fine yesterday. I did a presentation with exactly the same settings. And the uh, microphone is up to max. So it should be fine. Is that any better? It's certainly louder, and there's a bit of background noise with it, but um, but an improvement. No, sorry. Basically, mate, no. Can't hear anything. Yeah. I don't know what I'm... Is that any better? It's good to hear, but you have a lot of noise in the, in the background as well. But it, you can hear, one can hear you now. And I'm, it's I'm like, in a like silent a lot room. Of yeah, I understand. It, it, now it's good. Say something. Oh, now you're gone. It sounds as if your cable is broken or something. Are you gone again? Very, very faint. Hmm. This is ridiculous. Now I'm sorry about this. Now it's good again. 
the sound is good. The sound is good and the waterfall in the background works. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Right, okay, let's try. If we can hear, tell me if we can't. Yeah, okay, I, I, I will. Can you see that screen? Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's fine. So, because I can't, so if I change to the next slide, you should be able to see yes. the second slide. Yes, yes we very do. good. Okay, and great. And, well, and your voice is great now. Your sound okay. is good. Yeah. So, we've been meeting virtually and uh, we've got lots of choices and we use them at home and in the office and they come with backgrounds. And you can add your own backgrounds, but most of them are not easily believable unless you really are on the beach at Cannes. And not everyone is happy with showing what goes on in their domestic backgrounds. And some people have wonderful bookcases behind them. But then it occurred to me, uh, after prompting on Twitter, that most tech users have got access to big documents and they're in big tech. And they've got titles and authors and books have titles and authors. And the titles and authors are printed on them and they're visible. And this looked like a no-brainer to me. You could get the BibTech document file and turn it into a bunch of rectangles. So books, we've got lots of them. And Nelson Beeb has got a magnificent collection of BibTech files. Not everyone has a nicely ordered collection of books though. And some people have got lots of space. They can afford to put other things on their bookcase. And sometimes you get the feeling that you really need to have a librarian in the house. I'm lucky I married one, but not everyone is in that position. Alternatively, you could have your house designed so that it looks like a real life. So I thought, get the books as boxes. Now, tech is really good at putting boxes beside one another and making a line out of them. So why not do that? Use all the entries in a bit of file. don't pick and choose. Pick a random height and a random width within certain limits and pick a typeface, pick a color, and possibly even the choice of layout. And it was then that I discovered the random package which does precisely the kind of choosing we need with set random and set random end. So that was the first one I tried, and uh, well, yeah, it's not exactly Ikea, but it, it had books and they backed up side by side. The problem is that LaTeX itself has no way to get a list of all the fonts of typefaces on your system by itself. Let alone filter out the ones you don't want to use, obviously symbol fonts and things like that. But shell scripts are very, very good at doing that kind of thing. And so I worked with a script that would do it. And it could also be done, I guess, in, in Lua, if you wanted to do it inside there. But it clearly turned out very early that if case is far too small for the number of fonts that people have. So the script creates a nonce directory containing one dot text, two dot text, three dot text, one for each typeface it finds. And inside those can you see my cursor? Or not? We can. Yeah, yeah. 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 okay. Can. Yeah. Inside the, uh, each file, it then defines um, a font spec command for the font and also a name. It's possible to get the name of it by other methods, but I chose that one at the time. The script also sets the max font so that LaTeX knows what parameters to use for set random numbers. So that way you can get that to pick a font at random and it will use it and then pick another font for the next one. The script also makes an attempt to filter out the non-text fonts by using a regular expression. So it does get rid of maths and dingbat and symbols. For the colors, well, Xcolor provides names, but no way to access them in a way that you can use for random selection. So again, the script takes the names out of SVG, NAM, .def. You could use any of the other definition files. And in this case, because there's only a few of them, it writes an if case command to a file which gets input. So you can pick a, a color random. 
it turned out very quickly that I needed some limits on this because you can't have the same colour for both the background and the foreground, otherwise you get a book with nothing on it. So it needs to make a choice, it needs to make a choice in contrast, and the colours mustn't be too close. And I discovered at the URL that's at the bottom of the screen, there if you can see it, somebody came up with a brightness function. It's very crude and it's been criticised, but it does seem to work. And you test that, and if the colour is too close, you pick another one. And so there's a little loop in the LaTeX code, which goes through and keeps on going until either two colours are found or it's done ten iterations, at which point it gives up. But it's never actually reached ten. So then we come to layout. Now if you take the height and the width of a book at random, you can actually impose a limited amount of choice on layout. If the author name is short and fits across the top of the spine, then set the width to accommodate it and pick a random height. You then allow for the space that the author has taken up. If you can't fit the author across the top, then the whole author and title go in line up the spine at 90 degrees. And then you pick a random width, if it hasn't already been set by picking the author. And then you test set the title to see whether it will fit on the spine. And if it does, then scale the font up a little bit. Otherwise, test set it in a V-box, and then scale the font up or down so that the V-box will then fit. And then stack them, stack them all up, and put an F color box around them, and that sends the sign of the book. So books get the author at the top if it fits. The titles are rotated. The books are stacked like characters. By default, on an A0 landscape sheet, that's three feet by four feet, or 840 by 1189. But you can choose other A sizes. And there is a portrait option to rotate it if you want an upright book. Each book sits on a coloured rule which makes the shelf and the space behind the book is darkened with the impression of there being shadow. So you get that, which is about as close as you can get to a book. It needs to work with any bibliotech file, any font, any writing system on any platform. So it was pretty much a no-brainer to pick Zlatex because of the Unicode and the TTF and OTF fonts. Biblatech because of Unicode and Beaver because of Unicode, so that everything should work no matter where you run it. The script extracts all the keys from the Bibtex file so that everything gets processed in order, and it runs on Linux and Mac at the moment. I don't do Windows, so I would need somebody else to help me write them in whatever Windows uses for the script. It needs more testing. Lots of testing, and it needs a PowerShell version of the script. It uses the author and title of every entry as if they were books. So articles still come out book shaped. There is no attempt in there to try to make a book for the journal instead. The colours are bright, and it, for some reason it seems to pick an awful lot of primary colours or very close to primary colours. I don't know how to stop. Zoom, unfortunately, which is why I'm not using it, needs a green screen background to make background images work properly. It would be nice to have more choice of spine layouts. It's on CTAN if you want to download it as a package bookshelf. But then it occurred to me after all of this, should this just really be a Biblatex sign option? It doesn't need an external code. All the stuff you want to do is in Biblatex anyway. Uh, so maybe that's where the future is. So that's it. Thank you very much to all those people who helped. Uh, the Latin Ninja and a few other people on Twitter and some people on Content Text Tech and on Site Change. And all the nice um, guinea pigs who allowed me to sort through their PhD theses and books and test it on various other bits and pieces. Uh, my relatives featured in that one, but um, there are lots of others at the time. Thank you. <laughs> right.
Uh, what have we got? Uh, okay. Some uh, questions there. Question, uh, may I ask my uh, question uh, here? Uh, or yeah. It's, um, in English and American um, typesetting, actually book binding, uh, the sidewise uh, titles means from top to bottom. But in French and German uh, tradition, it's actually from bottom to top, and the same is Russian tradition. I wonder if you are going to use the Blatter option, which has a uh, field for language. Can you actually uh, check the language of your um, uh, entry, uh, of your Bible uh, entry, obviously, and rotate uh, correspondingly? Yes, I think if the language is identified in the VibTex file, then it should be very easy simply to rotate the VBox in which the title is set and put it in to read top to bottom instead of bottom to top. That should be very easy to do. But it would need something to identify the language. And that, I suspect, means putting in the language uh, field into the VibTex entries. Yeah, nice idea. Uh, I will definitely look at that. Um, okay. Answers other. Jim asks, said, uh, do some of the titles have math in them? And is it readable? Uh, <laughs> I, the ones I've done, yes, actually, I did do some from a mathematician. And I didn't check recently to see whether they do work. They, they should. I mean, they will do whatever uh, that does when you have specified a different font but then feed it some math that will typeset the math in computer modern I say. So yes it should it should do it and it should certainly be readable. There's another question in the Q and A there. And the Q and A there is from David Green. How does it deal with the number of entries in the bibliography to decide how many shelves? Uh, the answer is it doesn't. It simply keeps going, and once it's filled up one page full, it'll start on the next page. And it'll keep on going until the bibtex file comes to an end. So yeah, you will get a few left over on a second page. Um, I haven't got any way in my brain to think of how you could tell it to squeeze the last two in. Uh, you have that problem on bookshelves too. Now, if the books don't fit, you're going to have to buy another bookshelf. So, uh, I don't see if there's an easy way around that. But, if somebody comes up with one, that would do nice though. Um, David Walden is asking, Zoom has a virtual background feature, which is not new to me. The one I've got does, it recommends that you have one. And if I try it without, it really, really does look very nice. I used it yesterday and it worked pretty well. I've just clicked on virtual background and there's my virtual background. And it really doesn't actually change anything. Here's another one of the earth. And another one of some plants. It's working on the wall beside me because it's all a plain color. But it utterly ignores it where there's any complexity in the background. So, um, yeah. Maybe in some versions it does. It certainly doesn't on Linux. That's okay. It does in my Windows version. Windows, I wouldn't be at all surprised to find that has better support. Uh, I think your background is, is, is really is thinking it's you in the background as well, because it keeps you, of course, in, in the front, and it just doesn't get it right, yeah. because your background is, tr is curvy. Yeah. But what I need to do, of course, is to buy a piece of curtain track and mount it on the ceiling and then go and buy <laughs> some green drapes that I can pull behind me. Uh, no. um, Jeremy, uh, the colours, it's an artefact from the screen when you print the output. Of it. Oh, okay, thank you. I've never actually bothered printing them. Okay, so the brilliance of the colours is a problem with the screen. That means you could probably simply push it into GIMP and dull it slightly. Um, David says Zoom will work without green screen when machine has sufficient processing power. 
yeah, I did try that on an extremely fast brand new laptop. It was definitely the same, but I was running it under Linux. Virtual background. Yeah, I tried running the, the, on, on a Mac as well, because it was actually pointing out at daylight in the garden, and that didn't, it didn't like that either. I haven't had a lot of luck in making it work in Zoom. In Teams, on the other hand, it works absolutely perfectly. But they obviously have a different algorithm. Right. Any more? Has anybody written any Biblatic styles? I, I, is there any mileage in migrating the whole thing into that instead of having a separate standalone program? Right. Well, in that case, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Aha. Yes, Jeremy says at Gutenberg they printed 250 copies of the flyer on which a piece of this features. Uh, had he known that it had been automatically generated, he would have generated 250 individual versions. Jeremy, if you've got access to 250 people's lib text files, that would be interesting. Well, the Nelson collection is, is enormous. Oh, but with the randomness, also, it can be the same file just repeated. Different colours, different sizes, different shapes. You could do that, yeah, you would simply run it to But then you get somebody who looks in with a magnifying glass and says, no, oh, they're all the same. <laughs> Okay, well, then we can continue this as long as you like because um, Frank's not on for another 25 minutes or so. so. Okay, so I've gone fairly quickly through that and I'm happy to take questions on the details or um, maybe, uh, sit back and have a, another cup of coffee. So, how about you, Frank? What do you want to do? You want to wait for 25 minutes? 20 minutes. Well, we should definitely stay on the timeline. Yeah, might yeah, sure. Because, because that's uh, at all talk start. So getting late is one thing that's okay, but getting early is, is, is just not the right thing to do, I would say. So sure. just grab a couple of coffees and so on and so forth, and then, um, yeah. yeah. Arthur okay. is going to... to show my video because I'm on an iPad and I'm not sure I would get the sound through properly. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah, I will probably want to say a couple of words before the video starts. But uh, as I said, when we, we still have 20 minutes, so I would just say if there are no other questions and just have a break. Mm -hmm. And I can get some breakfast. <laughs> I'm going to get a glass of wine or maybe a whiskey. <laughs> I can get a glass of wine too. That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, Look, it's... Play the so French way. It's two o'clock in the here over. Yeah. Well, it's 10 in the evening for me, so... Yeah, I know. I, I stayed up till till 2.30 last night, so uh, it's a bit of a pain that we are really going around the clock. Yeah, yeah, still. Yeah, better than yeah. nothing. Yeah. Okay, there's another question there that seems to have come up about the complexity of the underlying code. Is um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, can people still hear me? That's the big question. Oh, yeah. yeah. All good. Okay, that's, that's fine. It's just that I don't trust this thing. If I turn it by <laughs> mute and then unmute, it seems to change the settings. So. Um, we are lip reading, the you know. Underlying code, always... How much does it deviate from the complexity of a simple latex document package? Uh, you can download and have a look at it. It's um, it's not particularly complex. The the only really complex bit was in the test setting of the title and the author to see how much space they took. Um, so it's I mean it, it's not big. It, it's quite a short, uh, quite a short class, and uh, it's got uh, 
basically three three sections in it. One chooses the font, one chooses the color with a little bit of iteration, and then the other chooses the layout, and that's probably two pages of code. Um, Can the colors be determined individually? I did think of that. I, at one stage, I said, well, look, why am I bothering to do this? Why not pick up the ISBN and go to each publisher's site and download the image of the book, which they presumably have on there, and use that instead? But of course, every publisher has them in a different place. There is no standard metadata, and all the fussing around with the publishers do about getting their metadata right is available but you would have to pay to have access to their database in each case and each one would be a different API so it really isn't possible to do it that way around so I thought random is as good as anything else there's no reason why you shouldn't stuff a couple of fields into a bibliotech file that says actually if you really want to know this particular book is uh, this size spine and it's in 36 point whatever the font is and it's in blue or green and then you could reproduce something which you pretty much look like but I'm not sure Biblatech has the fields for doing it yeah a series Michael Top says can covers be determined individually and how about a series of books where they all come out the same that would be a nice idea yes you should be able to in one and say when you hit the first one of these it's static for the next six issues the next six entries or um if it runs to six volumes all with the same title provided that the actual title field was clean and didn't say vol one at the end of it vol two vol three and the volume is in the right place, then it, you should be able to detect that. But you need to pre-sort the bibliography by title to make sure that they were contiguous. Yeah. I've also had a request to see if you can have, at random, books lying tilted over, taking up more space than they should, like people do. Um, again, you could do that. Okay. Well, thank you all for your attention. Yes, well, thank you, Peter, for a very nice talk and uh, some great pictures to be able to splash around the place and, in particular, of, um, allowing us to use it for the pub uh, publicity for the conference. So. Ah, we've lost your sound. You've muted yourself. You like? I did indeed, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was fun doing it, and uh, I will need to, to take a little bit of time to go. I've had a lot of email from it, so I need to take a while to go through that stuff and sort it out. Then get back to regenerating.